Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Kent Hovind. I was a high school science teacher for 15 years, and now I travel around the world and talk about creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. Okay, Jonathan, who's on the phone there? We've got Jared on the phone. Jared, welcome to the program again. You need to get your own program, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to try to do that later this year. If possible. Okay. Good. How can I help you, Jared? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to know, uh, what is the reference for this uh, Barney Maddox quote? Because I can't find it on the Internet. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I've seen it quoted in a couple of books. Uh, there's a book that we sell called Doubts About Darwin, Not After This. I know it's quoted in there. I don't have the book in front of me. I could look up the original source, but I know it's, it's stated in there. Yeah. I want the original source because I, I couldn't find it at all. Yeah. I, I went to the Human uh, Genome Project, mm -hmm. and uh, I looked for Maddox and Barney Maddox, and I couldn't find him. Okay. Then so you say he's a leading genome researcher. That was uh, information, as I said. I've, I've seen it twice. Uh, doubts about Darwin, not after this, and... But doubts about yes, doubts about creation, not after this. Doubts There's, about creation, not after this. Yeah, we don't we don't uh, sell books that <laughs> encourage people to trust Darwin. Okay. Um, also, it was um, CEM Technical Journal. What is that? Uh, if I recall the reference. Okay, I don't. I don't really like to put my finger on it real quickly, but uh, I'll see if I can work on that for you. Okay. Okay. Um, now. Uh, yeah. Is it true, though, that the genetic difference between humans and chimps is growing the more we learn about the D DNA? Uh, I don't think so. I think people are getting more sophisticated in the way that they compare things. It brings up a very interesting question about how do you compare two sets of data that don't, that don't have the same length? Correct. If we were to compare Darwin's book, for instance, with Genesis chapter 1, the, they don't have the same length. Genesis 1 is considerably shorter. Right. Even the whole book of Genesis is shorter than Darwin's book. Mm -hmm. So how do you compare? If we were to compare, for instance, the number of times that each book uses the letter E um, or a particular word like the, we could get a percentage and say, okay, out of X number of thousand words, you know, 7% of the time the letter E is used. Yeah, right? but that's not the kind of comparison they're doing when they compare genomes. And what kind of comparison are they doing? Direct comparison. Well, that would be a direct comparison of how many times they use letter E. No, no, no. I'm talking about you take two sets of data and you tell how much of the data is exactly in common. So if this uh, number, this percentage is changing the more that we look at it, I would suspect that the difference is due to um, genes. For instance, if you look at the number of genes we have in common, even if you're right that 90% of the genes are in common and 10% aren't, I'm doing the best. Those 10% that aren't in common are very, very similar, and the differences are due to mutations. So how exactly would you characterize the difference? Well, you're a mathematician. Could we take two mathematical formulas that are long, convoluted, and complicated that only have 1% difference in the formula, or in the equation, I should say, and give a very different outcome on the answer? Oh, of course, but there's a, there's a huge difference between uh, two mathematical formulas and the genomes of two different species. Well, you might want to check out, actually, this article by um, this geneticist, Daniel Griswell, uh, Ph.D. geneticist, and he's actually explaining what would be the implications of a 95% difference as opposed to a 90% difference or less. Where's that article at, Jonathan? That's the impact article, the latest one, 385, on right. ICR.org. So he's actually explaining it's not a, a, that would not be a little deal even if it was uh, just 10% of protein similarities. Because that's before, that's what they used to think it was 98%. They were not including uh, indels. They were not including, you know, for instance, they also just want to measure uh, protein coding, you know, genes like that. You also right. have to consider there's a real high probability that anybody doing research on the human genome, in order to get grant money, they have to somehow have the hope or promise or... Uh, potential of supporting the evolution theory as opposed to denying the evolution theory, or they won't get the grant money. I think it's ridiculous, Ken. I, I think, think it's a fact of science. No, no, no. If somebody discovered something with the human genome research, like compared to chimps genome, for instance, and they discovered that there was something that was just untenable with evolutionary theory, that person would become very, very famous. Well, you are dreaming. <laughs> I'm dreaming? Yes, sir. 
Anybody oh, goes, oh. call uh, Robert uh, Gentry at uh, halos.com, who published in major magazines all over the place. Uh, everybody published his work on radio polonium halos and granite. He's one of the world's experts on this radioactive disposal in, in granite rock and how it absorbs radioactive material, etc. Robert Gentry's work was published all over the place until, until somebody realized, you know, this, this proves the Big Bang Theory is wrong. The Earth was never hot, molten mass. They shut his grant money off like a spigot. Just go to halos.com and call Robert Gentry up in Powell, Tennessee, right near Knoxville, and ask him. He's a brilliant scientist, still does work on uh, radio polonium halos. But, boy, I tell you, the grant money was shut off immediately because it, it, go, it went against the evolution theory. He has yeah, a, but he's, involved in a, thing. he's involved in a pretty hefty legal battle, too. For instance, uh, some... You know, peer-reviewed public art or posting areas on the internet have taken away his ability to post his material anymore. So now he's pushing to get his passwords and all that stuff back because of the bias that they have against him as being a creationist. 